Hey guys, Shannon here. I'm here to talk to you about Crohn's disease today. So what is Crohn's disease? Well, Crohn's disease is a chronic inflammatory disease of the intestines. And it's kind of in the same category as like your irritable bowel disease, but it has several different symptoms and it's very chronic. Um, it primarily causes ulcerations of the small and large intestines, but it can affect the digestive system anywhere from mouth to anus. So Crohn's disease is actually named for the physician who described it. A group of about four physicians actually discovered the disease, but it's Burrell Bernard Crohn that actually described the disease in detail. And so he's credited with the name. So it can also be known as colitis, regional enteritis, ileitis, or terminal ileitis. So it's a few other names it goes by, but Crohn's is typically the common name for it. Now there are five different types of Crohn's disease. Uh, ileocolitis is the most common form of Crohn's. It's going to affect the ileum and the colon. Uh, the symptoms for this one include diarrhea, cramping, pain in the right lower area of the abdomen or the middle of the abdomen. Uh, it's also accompanied by significant weight loss very quickly. Then we have ileitis. Ileitis affects only the ileum. Uh, the symptoms are the same as ileocolitis because it is in the same kind of general area there. Uh, but in very severe cases of ileitis, uh, complications can include fistulas um, or inflammatory abscesses in the right lower quadrant of the abdomen. Uh, the third kind of Crohn's is gastroduodenal Crohn's disease. This is going to affect the stomach and the duodenum. Uh, the symptoms of this one are going to include the loss of appetite, weight loss, nausea, and vomiting because this one is further up in the digestive tract in the stomach area. That's why it affects the, that has those symptoms that go with it. And then we've got jejunal ileitis. This one has uh, creates patchy areas of inflammation in the jejunum. Uh, the symptoms are going to be mild to intense abdominal pain and cramps following meals along with diarrhea. And then the last kind of Crohn's is Crohn's colitis. This one affects the colon only. The symptoms are going to include diarrhea, rectal bleeding. Um, the disease can come out around the anus and actually show itself on the outside skin around the anal area. Um, so skin lesions and joint pain are very common in this form of Crohn's and pretty much you're only going to see the joint pain and the lesions in this form of Crohn's and not the others. Uh, here's a great image I found that shows like about the percentage of people that have Crohn's, like what type they typically have. About 35% are going to have here in the right colon where the ileocolitis is. And then here we've got the ileitis. It's right after ileocolitis in, um, it's how common it is at 35% as well. And then the colon alone, about 20% of Crohn's patients have it just in the colon. And then the very small percentage has it here up in the small intestine and up in the duodenum and the gastroduodenal. Um, here's just some general um, symptoms of Crohn's disease. You can just remember Christmas. You're gonna have cobblestones in your image. Uh, they're gonna come in with a very high temperature, uh, reduced lumen size due to the inflammation. They're gonna have intestinal fistula. Uh, skip lesions, which also show up in radiographs. Um, transmural means it affects all layers and it can ulcerate in the intestines. Malabsorption, because of all the inflammation, uh, Crohn's patients typically can't absorb any nutrients from their food. Abdominal pain uh, accompanies pretty much every single one of these. And then submucosal fibrosis, so Christmas is a very general type um, I can remember the symptoms with. All right, so the causes of Crohn's disease, um, no one actually knows what causes Crohn's disease. Um, we've got a lot of research going on, and recent studies are gonna suggest that heredity and genetics um, play big factors and could possibly be the cause. Um, also, environmental factors may contribute to the development of the disease. Um, poor diet and stress can contribute and can aggravate the condition, but don't necessarily cause Crohn's. So who's affected by Crohn's disease? Well, about 700,000 Americans are diagnosed with Crohn's disease. Um, it affects men and women equally, and uh, the disease can occur, occur at any age, but it's most prevalent between the ages of 15 and 35. Now, it tends to run in families, so even though they can't prove that it is a genetic disease, um, 5 to 20% of the people who have Crohn's also having a, like a first degree relative that's affected with Crohn's as well, a parent, a child, a sibling that also has the disease. Um, it's very common in developed countries, more so than underdeveloped countries, more common in urban areas rather than rural, and it's more common in northern climates rather than southern climates. Now to diagnose Crohn's, 
Yeah, um, typically the doctor will order a BE or a small bowel series or a colonoscopy, kind of depending on where your pain is and what kind of Crohn's they, they might suspect it is. And you can also do a, C a CT scan to diagnose Crohn's as well. Um, the small bowel series is what I performed on our patient here. This is the scalp image that I did before we added the contrast. And um, you can see like the irregular thickened mucosal folds right up in here, because he also had a small bowel obstruction, which is typical of patients with Crohn's disease. Um, also, you can see on small bowel series, um, you'll see a cobblestone appearance, string signs and skip lesions, and thumb printing are signs of Crohn's as well. So here we can see some thumb printing. Um, it's right in this area here, and you can see it kind of represents thumbs, hence the name. So that's a very common sign that you'll see of uh, Crohn's disease on a radiograph. This right here is where we're going to see our string signs. You can see all of the barium moving through the bowel here. So you can see here that the barium is created very string-like through the very narrow areas. Uh, so that's where it gets the name again, string signs. So it's the incomplete filling of the lumen. And, and the, they get real small like that due to the irritability and the spasms that the bowel tends to have in patients with Crohn's. And the string signs are typically seen around the terminal ileum in the patient. And then another common sign is going to be the cobblestone appearance. So it's produced by the transverse and the longitudinal uh, separations of the submucosa and the mucosa kind of separating out and creating this like cobblestone-like appearance. You can see the holes and it looks like a cobblestone pathway. So those are three like big signs on a radiograph that this is the Crohn's patient. So some treatment options, since there is no cure for Crohn's disease, you live with it forever, and some of the treatment options can hopefully put it in remission for you. Um, but it just depends on how serious your Crohn's is, since there's so many types of Crohn's and so many different, there's no really standard on how to treat each patient, because every patient is very different with Crohn's disease. Uh, drug therapy, um, anti-inflammatory drugs are typically the first step when you're diagnosed with Crohn's. Since it is an inflammatory bowel disease, they want to bring down that inflammation. So they'll typically give you anti-inflammatory drugs. Um, immune system suppressors are another step that they tend to take because the immune system suppressors will directly affect the immune system rather than attacking the inflammation itself. And um, hopefully that will take down some of the swelling as well, the inflammation. Um, antibiotics to treat any other things that might be going on with the Crohn's and to kind of help just bring it in remission. And then other medications just to treat the signs and symptoms. It's going to be your antidiarrheals, laxatives in some cases since small bowel uh, obstructions can occur very frequently with Crohn's patients, pain relievers, and then iron supplements and other uh, vitamins simply because they can't absorb everything they need. Uh, future medications is always, everything's in development these days. There's always options for clinical studies and trials since they don't really know how to cure it specifically. And there's no known cause for it. There's always clinical trials going on. And here we have a pyramid. Typically at the bottom is where you'll have your more mild Crohn's patients. They're treated with antibiotics, um, alternative therapies such as fish oils or probiotics. And then if your Crohn's is more severe, you move up the pyramid. To, uh, if you have a moderate Crohn's, they'll treat you with immune, suppressor, immune suppressors or steroids. And then up at the top for very severe cases of Crohn's that don't really respond to other treatments, that's when we get into more investigational drugs, along with things like Humira to help treat Crohn's. Lifestyle changes can really help people with Crohn's. Um, diet is really important. Um, limit your dairy, limit your fatty foods. You want to go for more low-fat foods. Eat smaller meals more frequently throughout the day and things like drinking plenty of fluids like water and cutting back on the alcohol and caffeine can really help to keep your Crohn's um, from flaring up. So it's good to talk with a dietitian about any vitamin supplements you might need and just how to get that under control. Um, smoking, smoking is just generally bad for you and you need to quit. Um, it increases your risk of, Crohn, of developing Crohn's and then if you already have Crohn's, it can aggravate the disease and make it worse. Uh, you're more likely to have relapses if you smoke um, more likely to need more medication, and more likely to have repeat surgeries if you're a smoker and you have Crohn's disease. And with stress, now it's not always possible to avoid stress, that's for sure, but you can learn to manage it. Um, talking to a therapist or doing things like exercise, like physical activity, or just relaxation and breathing techniques to kind of decrease the stress in your life can really help from aggravating the disease.
Now, if diet and stress relief and things of that nature don't work, then surgery is gonna be the next step. 70% uh, of people with Crohn's disease will eventually require some type of surgery to help the disease. Um, here we can see over in image A that there's a stricture in the uh, sigmoid colon and it's filled with barium. So right here, you can see how narrow it is since it's affected with the disease. So they went in and surgically implanted a biodegradable stent immediately, uh, so this is an image immediately after insertion. And you can see these little white dots uh, that are radiopaque on there, and you can kind of see the outline of the stent here that the arrows are pointing to. And uh, so then in C here, this is four months after the insertion of the stent, and since it is a biodegradable stent, it eventually just kind of dissolves in your body, but it leaves it more open and helps um, kind of treat the Crohn's. So you can see four months, it's completely gone. There's no radiopaque and markings that the stent had, and this patient uh, no longer has that stricture there. So uh, surgery can be an option to help treat the disease. The prognosis for patients, um, it just varies widely. Since Crohn's can be very mild or it can also be incredibly severe, it just depends on from patient to patient. Um, at the extreme, some patients will only experience one episode of Crohn's in their life, but other people are living with it. Um, about 13 to 20% have chronic Crohn's. They're constantly having to deal with this issue. And then uh, recurrences tend to be normal. You're, if you have a Crohn's patient, you're gonna see flare-ups. So again, regular, regular checkups is really important. But disease-free periods, once the disease is in remission, they can last from a year to decades. It, again, just depends from patient to patient. Uh, Crohn's is rarely a direct cause of death. Typically, it's something else um, because of the Crohn's that um, can lead to uh, death, but it's not really common to see someone die directly from Crohn's disease. Um, since there is no cure, again, regular checkups and treatment can help the patients live a relatively normal life. All right, and there's all my sources. I'd just like to thank you all for your patience and for listening to my presentation on Crohn's disease. <laughs>